Namaste and welcome. Welcome to spring. It seems like it's finally arrived for us and um, this practice is going to be about spring in some ways. Along with home for however many weeks it's been now since we've been at home, couple that with spring and spring actually showing up at um, the time that it's supposed to show up and the fact that we've got a whole lot of nothing to do means that many of us have started on things outside a lot earlier than we would have started on them in previous years. So our activities are different and we are spending more time at home and all that kind of adds up to some different discomforts in the body. We're gardening now, we aren't getting to the gym, we're not spending time uh, in the yoga studio, we might be sitting in a really uncomfortable office chair at home, we're trying to have video calls while also entertaining children so our bodies get a little bit out of whack. And what got me thinking about this was uh, a message from a childhood friend at the beginning of Stay at Home a few weeks back who said, I've been doing a lot more running and I've been doing a lot of trampolining. Not exactly sure um, if that's a good idea, but I've been doing a lot of these things and now my back is really bugging me. So I got to thinking about a practice for releasing low back and then spring happened and got to thinking about the gardening and the fact that I was gardening and feeling that in my body. So today we're going to try to release some of the potential tension that is there in the body. Find a seat that works for you. If you have at home a couple of things, that'd be awesome. Uh, a block and a blanket and a bolster are great things to have around. Or if those things aren't available to you, you can fake it with pillows and blankets of other things from your bedroom. Uh, I like to set up at the wall so that I have the wall as a, as a potential prop as well. But if that doesn't work for you, there will be other ways. Um, so for now, sit comfortably and bring your hands up to your heart. Take a full breath in. Shanti. 
earth, heavens, and atmosphere. We call upon the light that is the radiance divine. We offer ourselves humbly to that great sphere so that it might be our guide, so that it might illuminate our path, so that it might strengthen our practice. Om, peace, 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 and forever peace. Go ahead and start to uncross your legs. And if you have a block, grab your block and have it handy. And then you're going to come down onto your back. And when you come down onto your back, just have your block off to the side someplace. And start by setting yourself up so that your feet are flat to the floor and your knees just feel comfortable. You can rest your hands on your belly and use this moment to assess what you feel, whether it's in your hips or in your back from lack of activity or springtime gardening activities. Try to notice and feel the natural space at your low back. And then when you breathe in, let that space become a bit more pronounced. And then do the opposite when you exhale. So you can actually touch your low back against the ground and then breathe in. And breathe out. Let that happen a few times. And it starts to feel like the beginnings of a cat and cow motion that you would do on all fours and that we will do together. But you're not able to round your back here. And by flattening, you engage the muscles around your abdominals. So you add a component of awakening the muscles of your abdomen through your exhale here. Watch out for doing any extra work in your neck, in your shoulders, or in your jaw. And initiate through expanding your ribs. Rather than doing any extra motion at your pelvis, you'll feel your pelvis get heavier when you breathe in and the crease at the front of your pelvis where your hips meet your leg will get deeper so you have a really pronounced anterior tilt pause for a moment and take your block now you're going to use the block in between your thighs, and you can use that two ways. There's the, the skinny way, and then there's a slightly wider way. Skinny often feels too skinny, and a lot of it has to do with where we place the block. So I'm going to take it at this slightly wider place. If I bring it all the way down to the lowest point, or you can think of the highest point in my thigh, then it feels too wide. And if I take it all the way up to my knees, it feels like I'm having to squeeze the block. So I want to find the sweet spot somewhere close to my knee joint, not against the knee joint, where the block can fit into the space between my legs and I can hold on to it without dramatically changing the spacing between my thighs so that my thighs are still parallel to each other. I can still graze the back of my heels. And I'm just going to add a little bit of pressure against the block. So now I'm using my inner hip flexors or the adductors to draw in against the block. And then we're going to do that motion again. So that the breath in to expand and the breath out to flatten. 
Breathing in. And you might feel more of the action down at your pelvis now. And that's okay. But see if you can still imagine opening up through your front belly as part of the beginnings of the movement. Try not to apply so much pressure against the block that it feels like a lot of effort. Just enough effort. And drawing in, so using the muscles on the inside of your hip, should give you a sense of space across your low back, across your sacrum, so that by going inward and having this isometric hold, instead of using the glutes and squeezing against your sacrum, you're going in the opposite direction using the hip flexors to close in against the block and add some extra room across your sacrum and through your glutes. So that any tension that's been showing up there while you're out in the garden or simply not moving in the same ways that you were moving eight weeks ago can be freed a couple more times. And then pause and let your spine come to neutral, but keep the block inside between your thighs. And then the next time that you breathe in, begin to lift your hips and lift just enough and check what's happening in the muscles of your bum and make sure that you're not squeezing there. And then lift a notch higher. And again, make sure that you release the squeeze. Let the weight begin to move heavier into your shoulders and then check the squeeze and make sure there's no squeeze. So you begin to open up the crease that you had in the front of your hips and you get some space through the front of your hip flexor. But you don't want to add glutes to do that. Sometimes it's great to add your glutes to give that space, but see if you can avoid the butt squeeze here and allow yourself to anchor into your shoulders, anchor into your feet, and lift through your front body without getting into glute contraction. So you get a lot of space here, and you begin to allow some extra room all the way through this front plane of your belly. You might notice the deeper layers of muscle underneath your glutes firing, that's totally okay. You might even feel the muscles right inside what feels like your pelvic floor beginning to hug in a different way. As long as it doesn't turn into squeezing or discomfort, totally okay. And we're just gonna hang out here. And anytime you think you might be squeezing, just give a little touch, give a little jiggle and see what you can release. Check your neck while you're here and make sure that it doesn't feel like you are scrunching, flattening, or causing any discomfort. And you'll lose the natural curve that's usually there, but as long as it doesn't feel like you're causing yourself any discomfort or getting into tension, great. You might start to notice some heat showing up in the glutes, even though they're not squeezing. There's a warmth showing up underneath there. You know, warmth will equal some space in a moment. Linger here for a few more breaths. See if there's one last notch that you can lift. Make sure the work's not all in your arms to get there. And then slowly lower down. And slip the block out. And just let your knees open and close a couple times. You'll probably notice that your hip flexors are feeling rather happy that you are no longer doing that. And then roll to your side and come up to sit. 
and your block can disappear. If you have a, a bolster or a long blanket, now would be a good time to grab that. And you use that for a supine twist. So the bolster or a blanket can fit between your knees and ankles to give some extra room, that room that I was talking about, but in your sacrum. So that when we're twisting, we wanna keep the space in your sacrum spacious and comfortable. So when I lie back on my back, I'm gonna take the bolster over to the left side and then roll to my left side to put the bolster between my knees and my ankles. And while I'm here, I can stack up my knees and stack up my ankles and then begin to rotate through my upper body so that my chest orients up to the ceiling. And then I can open up my right arm and gaze up to the ceiling and just release any tension that is happening in your feet. As you can use your elbows against the ground. So I can press my right elbow into the ground to open up my chest a little bit more, press my left elbow to steer. So I take my body, which wants to go over to the left side, and I press and steer with my elbows so that my chest can open up to the sky more. Only if that works. And your gaze can stay up toward the ceiling for this one. because you've got the bolster where it is and your knees where they are, you'll still have a lot of room in your belly to work with. So allow yourself to breathe as fully and comfortably at your belly as you like. And then when you exhale, just let the exhale happen naturally. So it doesn't feel like you have to work in that way that you were engaging your abdominals before. Your abdominals can just stay in a relaxed state as relaxed as they can be when you're breathing out. And even though the bolster's between your thighs, you're not squeezing. It should feel like it really is a support for your upper leg, a cushion for the bottom leg so that your joints aren't rubbing up against each other and it just can create a little bit of room. Some of you have probably slept with a blanket or a bolster rolled up in between your knees, sleeping on your side to relieve um, issues with your back in the past. It's a similar thing here. Give yourself a couple more breaths on this first side. And then when you move to the next side, you want to minimize a lot of extra movement, right? So don't uh, have, don't you want to, you don't want to have to engage a lot of muscle to get there. I'm going to roll onto my left side mostly, pull the bolster out, and then move again onto my back. So I can then shift onto my right and place the bolster in between my knees and ankles, catches my thighs and my lower legs too. And then begin to roll. So at first, it doesn't feel like I get a whole lot of twist in this initial opening up. So just let yourself be there for a moment without forcing or cranking. Second side is always like that, at least for my, my body and in my experience. So then when you start to feel the space, that's when your elbows can do some steering. So you can use the left elbow to puff and you can use your right elbow to steer so that you feel more of your left shoulder moving toward the ground. Your hands can rest on your body. If you're next to a wall or there's room, you can stretch your left arm in any direction as long as you feel like it's causing any tension on your shoulder.
And then when you find your sweet spot, settle into it. Soften everything around your face and allow your expression to just become neutral. Each of your inhales can go right down into your belly. If along the way it feels like there's more room, then you can do one more steer. When you breathe down into your belly, it's hard to feel it, but it does give your low back some room. When, you're, when your breath can really get into the depths of your abdominal cavity, then your low back tends to not expand technically, not get bigger really, but it feels as though the muscles back there can soften and release to make room for this more 360 degree experience of breath. So you'll experience it at your belly but the benefit will be through your ribs, obliques, low back, QLs, all across your lower torso. And another moment here. Then start to fold back over onto your right side a little bit so you can maneuver the bolster out of the way. Use a hand and ease your way up to sit. And then your bolster can slip out of the picture for a moment. And then after that, you're gonna make your way onto all fours. And when you come to all fours, Shoulders underneath your wrists there, shoulder wrists underneath your shoulders rather. Give a spread across your hands. You can even turn your fingers out a little bit if that helps with your shoulders or climb up onto fists if that's better for your wrists. Lay out the tops of your feet behind you. And now as you take a cat and cow movement, you'll feel a little bit more action at your pelvis and you'll be allowed you're allowed, you'll be able to round your back at the end of it. So the breath in begins the movement, belly expanding, your hips can release, your gaze can go forward and up, and then draw in so that you feel your belly coming close to your spine and your tailbone moving closer to your nose, and then release through your pelvis, belly, chest, throat, and gaze. And exhale to round into yourself so that your navel pulls close to your spine. Release your pelvis to soften your belly and open your chest. And feel the whole wave motion going through your entire spine. Notice within that the, the micro articulations that happen. And how it feels to draw in and feel the upper segments of your spine release your skull at the end of your exhale. And how at the beginning of your breath in, you can feel your last spinal segments down around your sacrum and coccyx really feel as though they can unfurl. 
maybe it's simply imagining that or visualizing that that can help for you. few more of those. And then start to find your way into a neutral spine. And walk your hands back. If it's okay for your knees, have a seat and just roll your wrists around a couple times. And then come to sit on your bum. And if you can, sit without anything underneath you so that the soles of your feet come flat to the floor and your hips are ever so slightly wider, your feet are so slightly wider than your hips. And start off by taking your fingers behind you and you can tend your fingers to the floor just as a support. So as we move here, one leg is always gonna stay in the starting position. So when I begin, I'm gonna open up my left leg and drop it down and then bring it back in. And then I'll open up through my right leg and drop it down. And I'm mirroring you so that you can follow along. Open and bring it back in. And it should never feel like force moving this way, but I can use the inhale to open up my hip and the exhale can bring me back, and then the inhale can open up on the other side. And right now with my hands behind me, my arms act as a support system. They act as a way of keeping my spine upright. So if this feels like plenty, then absolutely stay here with this. But to begin to turn on a little bit more of the muscles around your spine, we're gonna move your arms now so that they take hold of your knees. And you can clasp your opposite wrist here. And so when I move, I just take that foot out and breathe in, and then breathe out to bring it back. And then open it up with an inhale, and then bring it back. So my arms are doing some work here to give my spine an upright alert shape. And you might find that you're not getting as much openness through your hip as you might have when you had your arms behind you. And that's totally okay. Just try to keep the movement smooth and connected to your breath. And if this feels like the place to be, the place for you to stay, then stay with that. You can take it one last step and just float your arms. So I'm no longer holding on to my knees now, but I can use the grip to keep my chest open, the muscles around my spine have to work all by themselves now. As I move in and out of this inner hip opening. Right when you think you might not want to do this anymore, is the perfect time to do just a few more. The 
exhale is always going to bring you back. The inhale opens you up. And you're watching out for leaning or shifting through your spine. Last couple for each leg. Good, and then hug around your knees. Drop your chin and let your head go side to side a couple times. And then if you have a block, grab that and it's going to be a seat for you. So I'm going to use it not totally flat because mine is wood. I'm going to bring it up a notch. If you have a foam block at home, it might be better to have it totally flat rather than up a notch. You could also do this sitting on a bolster experiment. So when I sit on this, I want to set it up like a supported squat. So I can feel my sitting bones on it. And then I'm going to just have a squat position. But the thing about squatting is it isn't so much um, just getting your knees into this deep flexion or your hip into this deep, deep flexion. When we actually are squatting with no support, there's actually some strength that we use in that. And we're not using that here. We do get the flexion and that's pretty great. And this is a great position from which to do things like weeding or planting. It's one of my chosen positions that if I'm down, I'd rather be doing things this way than on my knees. Right? But this is going to be a jumping off place. So I'm going to make sure that I feel stable and I'm not going to go backward. I'm going to tent my fingers to the side so that I know that I have a little bit more wiggle room. And just start by stretching out through your right leg. Again, I'm mirroring you. And then bring that back in. And then stretch out through your left leg. And then bring that back and in. This time when you stretch out with your right leg, then move it so that your leg opens up. And then bend it and bring it back and in. And then stretch out with your left leg and then move it out to the side. Bend it and bring it back and in. Stretch out your leg, move it out to the side, and then move and maneuver both hands for a moment so you can shift your weight do a micro lift of your hips and just land again. Turn out some through your left toes and drop through your right fingers, or left fingers rather, and open up. And then pull that back up and readjust. Tent, tent, bring in your leg. Stretch out through your left leg, move it, tent both hands, Lift your hips a little bit so you feel just a slightly different position of your sitting bones, a very front edge. Turn out some through your right toes, drop your right arm, and open up with your left arm. And then drop all that tent, tent, and bring it all back in. Do it again, but as your leg is getting long on the right side, Go right into opening, stretch it out to where it was before, tent your fingers, lift, reposition, and turn out with your left toes. Reach out with your left fingers. You can even use your right hand to open up through your ribs. Watch out for any hyperextending that might want to be in your knee. And where you'll feel the space is in your inner hip flexors. Opening up and rotating through your chest. And draw that back and in and bring your foot back to its starting place, maybe with no hands. You can tend your fingers, extend out with your left leg right into that place where you want it to be. If there's a little lift and reposition, go for that. Turn out some with your right toes. Drop your arm. Use your hand to flare open some of your ribs. Make sure you're not hyperextending or pressing down with your knee, but there can even be a little softness to it. As you roll open, open up your arm. 
maybe you feel it in both in your hips right now, or maybe you're just noticing it in your bent leg, so over in the right leg. And draw that back and in, maybe with no hands. And then one last time, take it open, turn it out, and flare wide across your reach. And bring it back and in, maybe with no hands. Lean and extend. Find your sweet spot and open it up. And then slowly bring that back and in. Have a seat for a moment and pause. So it can always be done with the block underneath you. It doesn't have to be done with the block underneath you. If you have an inkling or um, just more movement available to you, you can always do this from standing and you can start with a wide straddle and move in and out of the movement. And that looks like this. Setting up your straddle, you can start up tall and then you move from side to side so that when you want to breathe in, you bend and you shift and you come back and you bend and you shift. Just as an option, if you want to take it somewhere different when you're doing it on your own. But do make your way up to stand and stand where you're not going to bump into anything because you're going to be using your arms and they're going to be moving around. Separate your feet so they're a good hip distance apart and consciously plant into your feet without locking your knees so that when you begin to move your body, your arms can be sort of T-Rex arms so that you don't get into big swings right away. And notice where your breath is so that your exhale is part of the twist. And the inhale brings you through this midpoint. X, X, X. And then as you find your rhythm with that, your arms can stay in that shortened length and tuck a little bit. So that every time I turn, one arm is in front and one arm is behind. And then as you get the swing of it, you can begin to let your arms unfurl through the midpoint. There might be a tapping that happens with one hand, but what I'm not doing here is lifting up through my heels. It's not a bad thing to lift up through your heels, but if I lift up through my heels, I might be inclined to go deeper in the twist than I need to. And I don't need to go very deep into this twist. I want to feel the rotation, but I also want to be aware of the stability in my middle body. So I'm not trying to get into the deepest twist, but I'm allowing my spine to rotate. and enjoy the rotations. If you feel anything in your knees when you're doing this, make the movement smaller so that you swing less and you simply turn and tuck. The swinging is nice, but if it bothers your knees, make sure that you keep it where your knees are appreciating what's happening. And we'll do this a little bit longer. Last five, four, Three, two, and one. Good. And then pause and just let everything center out again. 
And once you feel a sense of center, you can narrow your feet. After twisting, we're going to have a little bit of a waving through the spine. So that and coming back to those articulations in the vertebrae and making sure that they feel like they're able to articulate in many different directions rather than just being crunched. We want to have a, a wave-like freedom that goes through the entire spine. So when we begin that, you have to think a little bit about waves or worms and use that to move through the entire sweep of possibility through your spine. Have your hands next to your body so that you don't get into shifting your shoulders or doing big changes in your arms or chest to do the waves. But imagine your spine just being the driver behind the movement. When you begin, move your chin and your nose forward and sort of like bad driving posture and then pull back into that and then press forward and then draw it back but then follow the movement so i go forward move the weight toward the ball of your foot sweep up and then rock the weight back let your belly come in and your tailbone catch and then land again at your starting place so Breaking it down like that one more time, it starts with a little bit of a jut that's going to take you toward the ball of your foot. Roll, gaze, open, rock, engage your belly, hug in your pelvis, and then come back to your starting place. And then you want to let that roll over itself. So when you begin that rolling, it looks like this. And the, the piece that might be the trickiest is in your low back at the end of that wave. Right now we're starting the wave at the top. In a moment we're gonna start the wave at the bottom. But when we finish the, the wave before it begins again, there has to be some length that comes through your low back. So you can feel the opening. That's right there, your low back gets into that spacious quality and your belly comes open. So you gotta reverse that belly in, tailbone, as you go. So there's a, a loosening and an engaging of the muscles around your middle through that movement. Open, spacious, catch, open, spacious, and catch. Good. And that's something that you can continue to play with when this, when this time that we're spending together is finished. When you reverse it and you start at the bottom, that might feel more normal. You can check it out. But we're going to go pelvis first. Chin into your chest, pelvis forward, and ripple open before you come back. Chin in. And you might feel the natural belly in long through your low back as that movement begins, rippling from the ground, pelvis, belly, chest, throat, and back again. And the reason that we do this, not only to articulate, but it's a rapid fire conversation that has to happen through the support system of muscles in your spine to be able to release and catch and catch and release when you wave through the spine. So I'll do one more head first.
Good. And then you can begin to separate your feet a little bit wider again. After waving through the spine, it's nice to open up through your outer hip. So you can begin to step your left foot across and just tent on the ball of your foot. And that's going to move out through your right hip and open up the whole outer edge of your greater trochanter and the tensor fascia latte all the way up into that space just above your hip hip point there opening up through your hip and then step in through the middle and go the other way so you've got your left foot crossed over or excuse me your right foot crossed over so you can move out through your left hip and then come back and you can keep it like that or when you step your left foot over and move your right hip out you can begin to let your left hand drop down and then you can use your right fingers to turn open a little bit more of your waist so you really keep the lateral bend going and you don't have to put any weight on your left hand here. If anything, it's just a reminder to your knee to stay open without any force. And then you come back up. Stepping across with your right foot, moving your left hip out. And then you can let your right hand drizzle down. Your left fingers encourage your waist open. Sometimes it's nice to have your gaze down if, if your balance is a little bit shaky. You can take your gaze forward, and sometimes that'll help open your chest up just a little bit more. But where you want to notice the space is in your outer hip. And then you come back up. We'll do it one last time, stepping across with your left foot. So you can move your right hip out. And if you've been dropping your arm down, you can still let your left arm go down and then take your right arm up. And if you're taking your arm up, you can come all the way over. So then you get space through your hip, ribs, and all the way up through your lats and across your arm. And when you do that, rotate open before easing yourself back up. Going across the other side, stepping over with your right foot, move out some with your left hip, drop and reach. Stay open across your chest. And your gaze can go forward or rotate up a little bit. before you drop and release to come back in. And then once you've got the space there, you want to turn that into some circles. So now that you've stretched out through your hip, keep your legs long and let your hips do the motion. So it's a very exaggerated and slow motion hula hoop action. And like the twists earlier, your knees, they're not locked, but you're not bending to shift from side to side. You're keeping your legs long and spiraling around through your middle. And your arms can just hang down by your sides. And then begin to reverse the motion. Feeling those same couple of spaces. I'll turn sideways for a sec so you can see what my hips do. Still feeling space through my outer hip as my hips go out in one direction or the other. 
not squeezing when I go forward and making sure I feel like I'm still mostly upright even when the hinge at my hip creases I don't want to feel as though I'm doing a forward bend a few more times in that direction good and then after the movement in your hips and the rotation there, we're going to come back down to the floor. Set yourself up, lying down on your belly, and place your hands alongside your chest as if you were going to do uh, a cobra. But curl your toes under and take your feet a little bit wider than they naturally land. And then once you've gotten there, press into your big toes, just float your thighs for a moment so that you're not um, resting on your knee joint. And then once you get that spot where you're floating, when you drop, you should feel like you land above the knee a little bit. Your hands can come forward some and turn ever so slightly outwards, hug your elbows in, and make your way into a little cobra. So that means that your pelvis is still on the ground and you can allow yourself just to float right there. So that really opens up through your lower belly and the front of your hips. You've opened up the sides of your belly, heated up the inner hip flexors. So now I'm giving a little bit more focus to the front side of your pelvis. And then ease down again, take a break. And then set that up again as you curl up so that your pelvis is heavy. And then take a breath in and use the exhale to take a minor twist over to the right side. Come back through the middle and then take a little twist over to the left side. Back into the middle, over to the right. through the middle, and over to the left. And we'll keep that going a few more times. And come back to the middle and pause and stack your hands rest your head give your hips a little shake from side to side and then use your hands to come on up to your hands and your knees, and then find a seat. When you sit, it's a great time to bring your <clears throat> blanket over if you have one. And throw that down so you can have a seat on your blanket and just have a little lift from the ground. And then when you begin to bring the soles of your feet together, taking what we did earlier and putting the two halves together for Baddha Konasana. Use your hands for a moment on the floor or whatever you're sitting on just to hoist, lift, and drop your thighs. So there's that extra space in your inner hips again. And then lower while you've got that extra space. And then once you're down, try to relax the action. Drop your hands somewhere on your feet so you can take hold without feeling like you're pulling. And focus on the sitting. So you engage through the muscles that help you sit tall so the spinal support system is there for you. And you allow yourself to be alert, to be lifted through your spine without it feeling overdone. 
and allow your thighs just to drop to where they drop. And once you land in that spot, breathe all the way in and all the way out. You can, if you know that your hips and knees are healthy enough, you can lean over to one side and drop a hand into your thigh and add length through your arm. So I'm extending my arm while I lean away so that the amount of force that I place against my leg is not so strong. So I'm not, I don't want to feel like I'm shoving. And then I'll come back and I can take that to the other side, lean, extend my arm. Make sure you're not pressing on your actual knee, but you really press in the thick part of your thigh and the middle part of your femur. And then you come back. And there may or may not be any difference in the space there, but if there is, great. And then two more breaths this way. And then you can begin to hinge forward a little bit. And as you hinge, hinge only to the point where you feel like your spine is still long. Add a small amount of action to your outer hip flexors now so that you're encouraging your thighs to go down without encouraging any pinching or grabbing or any discomfort. And then there might be one more hinge. So my goal is not to get my head down to my feet. My goal is to feel the length in my spine that I set up, whatever openness I have available to me and my legs and my hips, and to feel like I still have room to breathe. We don't need to add elbows to the actions. I'm not pressing my elbows against my legs. They're just resting there. If you're uncertain and or more of an A-type personality who tends to press, then you might move your hands forward so that they just leave the picture for a moment. And then ease your way back up to sit. You can use your hands to guide your legs in. If you're sitting on something, move it out of the way. Now we're gonna, before we go into uh, a resting shape, we're going to have Gomukhasana, uh, cow face pose. And the thing with Gomukhasana is you can do it sitting or you can do it reclined. Um, and I'll show you both of those things. When you do it reclined, a wall is really nice for that because you can slide right up to the wall, take your legs up the wall, and then cross your right leg over your left leg so that your feet start to level off at about the same height. And once you've gotten that, you can then drag your feet down a little bit lower. And because the wall is there, you can dig your feet into the wall and you get some of the space that you get when you're sitting without the pressure on your knees. And then you can do that with both legs. knees down. And press into the wall. So you can do it on your back or you can do it sitting. If you're going to do it sitting, start on all fours and pull your right knee forward so it can snake around. Flare your feet out the way I just showed you against the wall so that there's room to ease back and have a seat. And my right leg is on top right now. So if you were doing this and you wanted to have a little support underneath you, having some blanket come underneath your left hip 
would be the hip that you want to support so your right hip can have a little bit more drop. And then as you find your seat, your right hip is probably going to be where you feel the most opening when your right leg is on top, but you're getting some space across your entire sacrum, across the, the flaring of your glutes, across your low back, and then you can allow yourself the pleasure of folding if that's available. Ease your way back up. If you're sitting, come back up onto your knees, change your legs, and thread them the other way so then your left knee can pull forward. Ease back. And if you'd like to have something under a hip, it'll be right underneath your right sitting bone this time. Sitting might be enough. And so allow yourself to uh, stay with the seat if that's what feels best. If you'd like to fold, hinge and drop your head. Ease yourself back up. Come out onto your hands and knees if you were sitting, or roll to your side if you were on your back. And here's where your bolster can be down near the foot of your mat, and your blanket can begin to roll up into a skinny roll. Let's do that again. just so it's as comfortable as possible. Roll it up. So you get a nice, compact, skinny roll. And that's gonna go across your mat, somewhere in the middle space. And the bolster's for your legs. So you want to be able to pull the bolster back, feel like you can get your heels on the ground, and then the blanket's going to go across your back somewhere near the base of your shoulder blades, it's sort of a, an opening of the heart, and it's more of a finessing to find the, the right spot for you rather than the exact spot on a bone surface. So I'm going to ease back. I'm going to make sure that it's definitely not under my low back and it's not so high up in my shoulder blades that it feels um, uncomfortable, but I'm going to feel like when I lie back that my chest gets to open. And I can do cactus arms here. If cactus arms don't work for you, you can always go out to the side. If that's too much, then you can rest your hands on your body. But it's great if your elbows can be off the blanket. So that you allow yourself the extra room across from your breastbone all the way across your shoulder to your elbow. And this will be your resting space. So settle in. And of course, if it doesn't feel restful, stay for a few moments and then let it go and you can transition into more of a Shavasana space. And when you're here and you're breathing, think back to that initial 
movement on your back when we did more of a supine cat cow, just allowing your ribs to naturally expand. They're already doing it here. So you're finding the space without the movement. And perhaps you can feel the space in your low back. Linger here for a while, unless you're changing into Shavasana. And sink in a few layers deeper to yourself. Allow your breath to feel shallow, even though you're moving down to your belly. Think about a shallower breath, one that just gets underneath the surface without going to the fullest depth so that your mind can move to a quieter space.
We are one life, we are one light, and we are one love. It's with gratitude that we bow, honoring each other. Peace be with you, blessings upon you. Thanks for tuning in. See you again next time.